السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد All praise due to Allah alone We praise him and we seek his help Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one And whomsoever Allah leaves astray No one can show him guidance Brothers and sisters Welcome to a new edition of your program, Ask Koda. A quick reminder of our phone numbers, area code 002-0238-555-248 or 249. And the email address is ask at huda.tv. We're getting tons of emails and we're trying our best to compile them and give a comprehensive answer to many emails in uh, in one, as much as we can, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Um, we still have uh, a couple of pending questions from uh, yesterday's episode. Sister Khadija from United Arab Emirates, and I hope her husband is following the program today. She said, I'm married with four children, and I love my husband very much. The problem is that uh, he very rarely prays. He only prays when I push him to do so. I don't know what to do. I hope he is listening uh, to the program right now. First of all, to understand uh, how his wife feels about that. Second, the religious view with regards to a person who claims to be a Muslim but does not pray. Uh, the vast majority, the jumhur of the Muslim ummah and the Muslim scholars are of the view that, that a person who does not pray is a non-Muslim. Yes, some scholars differentiated between a person who does not pray because He's negligent of the prayer. He prays on and off. And a person who denies the mandate of the prayer, and he's asked to pray, but he refuses. But by the end, even if a person is negligent, lazy, uh, prays on and off, he is at a great risk that he may lose his Islam. We're not only talking now about Iman. We're talking about Islam. Because in fact, if... Uh, uh, a Muslim does not pray, he will be ordered by the ruler, by the judge, by the authorities to pray, and he will be imprisoned for three days in order to pray. If you have any doubt, any misconceptions, we are required to uh, explain it to him and refute it if it is required. But if he still insists because he's lazy, he's busy, then he will be treated as a non-Muslim. He will be treated as a non-Muslim. The ahadith in this regard are very dangerous. In one hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, الْعَهْدُ الَّذِي بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ الصَّلَاةِ فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدِ كَفَرْ The difference between us and the non-Muslims is the prayer. We have to pray five times a day. Not just whenever we have a chance or during our spare time, or our leisure time. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا The prayer is imposed on the believers during certain fixed times. It is considered a major sin to postpone a prayer, one prayer, from its fixed time till the time of the next prayer has entered. If somebody did not pray dhuhr until it is already the asr time while he is resident, and awake and conscious, does not have an excuse. This person has committed a major sin. فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّةِ In Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, the behavior of Bani Israel and that applies to us about some people who are أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ they did not neglect it entirely, rather they postponed it, they delayed it deliberately from its proper time. وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ And they followed their desires. فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّةِ Their fate will be 
a valley and hell well I do Billah in the name of Ghay uh, there is no excuse there is no pardon for a person who deliberately skips the prayer even a single fard and it doesn't make any sense to fast why not praying what are you going to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of breaking your fast ذهب الظم وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر the reward has been confirmed what reward you are talking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man sama ramadhan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahum ma taqadda ma min zambi one who observes fasting during Ramadan out of faith and hoping to collect the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for fasting, all his previous sins will be forgiven. This person does not want a reward from Allah, does not fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he does not pray. One who does not pray has no fasting. This is not an invitation to those who do not pray and fast, not to fast as well, rather I'm calling upon them to start praying immediately. Lest you die in this condition, you end up in fire. Pray before you end up having people pray for you during the funeral prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yamila from Singapore. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Jamila. Yeah. How are you, brother? Great, alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. You're calling currently from Singapore, right? Yes, yes. Okay, great. How can, how can you view Huda TV there on uh, Hot Bird or what? Uh, live streaming, I watch live streaming Okay, online. okay, great. Great. Jazakallahu khairan, Thank you so much. Yes. I want to, I'll be going to Umrah, inshallah. I uh, just want to ask you, if I want to delay my menses, can I take the vaccine? Because I thought my periods will come earlier this month, but it's been, uh, it didn't come early. So when I'm there, I'll be having my menses. So can I take medicine to delay it? Okay. Hard. I'll answer you, inshallah, Sister Jimmy. Inshallah. That's it? Thank you. I want to go back to Sister Khadija and every woman who is in a situation like that. Husband does not pray. And it's been years. Now we have a bunch of kids from him. You, you've been giving him advices after advices, inviting him to pray, listen to speeches, reminding him of the importance of the prayer. By the end, give him the ultimatum. It's either you start praying or I'm out. Because the danger of living with somebody who willingly chose not to be a Muslim. It is like that. This is not extreme, but this is the reality. This is a reality. If there is an Islamic state, the judge will differentiate, will separate between a husband and wife if the husband does not pray. He chose not to practice Islam. So please, I hope you're listening right now and every man who's putting his wife and his in the path of Taala or the love of her husband. Remember she said she loves you so much, she reveres you, but Please show some love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your family members. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. It is you who is responsible to protect your family members and yourself again is the fire of hell. Not take them into it. By not praying, you cannot tell your children, do not copy me, I'm bad. You guys have to pray. So if the children grow up like that, where I met somebody who told me that for 40 years he never prayed. Why? Because his, his dad did not ask him to pray. Even though his masjid would open to, the, his house would open to the masjid, uh, right across from the masjid. But the family was negligent of the prayer. So you'll be responsible for your negligence, for your carelessness, and also for ruining the future of your children and your family members. Please, Ramadan is a turning point. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon you, forgive us our sins, and inspire you to repent unto Him. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Hamid from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Hamid. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. Sheikh, I have a question regarding zakah. Yeah, go ahead. I want to know, can we pay zakat to our, uh, our staff, office staff, our workers? 
if their salary is not enough, they are, uh, they are staying in Dubai, they are from India. Are they your employees? Yes, they are the employees. Okay, they are your employees, you're the boss? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Abdul Hamid. Brother Abdullah from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Abdullah. Okay, that was cut off. Please try again. Uh, first of all, with regards to Sister Jamila's question from Singapore, going for Umrah, she wants to postpone or delay her menses by taking contraceptive tablets, mainly those pills would uh, delay. But sometimes the adverse effect would make a continuous bleeding where the woman would be confused whether this is the period blood or uh, due to uh, an illness or as a side effect of taking those pills. So please consult your doctor and if she says it is okay to take it and uh, there is no fear for you from side effects, it is permissible in this case and condition. And not to forget, let me give you the way out. In case you went for Umrah and the period started or the bleeding was continuous throughout from beginning to end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a way out. You need to do this. Even while you're having the period, you say the talbiyah and the ihram at the appointed miqat, whether in the plain or on land, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرًا when you enter Mecca, you stay in your hotel room. You can go everywhere, but not enter any masjid, and obviously not Al-Haram, until the period is over. What if, as long as you're staying there, the period didn't stop, the bleeding didn't stop, and now you're fixing to leave tomorrow. In this case, take a bath, and a woman with the period would wear the pad, and perform tawaf and sa'i, and that's it. And the Umrah will be complete. And she will be excused due to the necessity. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam. Abdul Hamid is asking a very serious question. Can one who is Musir and wealthy and owes zakah, can he pay the zakah dues to his employees? I wanted to verify whether they are his colleagues or uh, junior workers with him or he is the owner of the business or in charge. Why? Because I don't want to confuse the issues. Uh, when the boss comes in Ramadan and he gives his employees the money, he's paying the zakah. But they may expect, or he may expect a return from that, that they work a little extra, or over time, or they work harder. So what I advise is, yes, number one, it is permissible, as long as they are eligible. They are poor, they deserve to accept the zakah, in this case, I would highly recommend to remove any doubt from your heart. And otherwise, this is not zakah, you got paid. But the answer is yes, he can pay them the zakah as long as they're eligible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Suraya from United Arab Emirates. Hello, assalamu alaikum, doctor. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, doctor, I have one question. I'm married now one year. Since uh, one day before last Ramadan, I got married. And uh, one day before this uh, Ramadan, my husband moved out from the house. And he's demanding that I should, uh, you should bear the expenses of the rent and all the rest, half, half, me and him. Are you working? Yes. And uh, uh, were you working when you guys got married? Yes. So before marriage, the arrangement and the agreement was that you guys are going to live together and he would be in charge for the financial support, right? Yeah, yeah. And what I happened? I signed the check for the contract of the house, but uh, he said that he will pay, he'll pay me each end month the rent. Mm. But now we've stayed one year. Now, one day before this Ramadan, he moved out and he said, uh, I should pay half, half. Is there a reason? Yeah. Okay. This is, the re this is the main reason he wants to move out. He said he has financial pr problem. 
But he doesn't have any financial problems since uh, he's still working. Even if he has financial problems, th this is more worthy to stay around and to hang around. But if he moves out, he opens another house then, right? Yes, yes. He moved to another house. I mean, sharing with a, another man. He wants me also to move out and share with other ladies and live separately. And uh, everybody should look after each other separately like that. Mm. This is really strange. Uh, subhanallah. And this is the effect of watching too much uh, Western movies and Hollywood movies. There is no such thing in, in Islamic culture and Islamic yes. traditions. We'll answer you, inshallah, Azza Yes. Okay. He, he Any other questions? Night, yes, yes. Yeah, about him, Yani. He's, uh, he's doing night duty and usually he doesn't pray on time. Some prayers... Uh, oh, okay, uh, Sister Suraya, now we, we don't want to confuse the issues. If we're talking about the financial part and... Uh, uh, house issues and sharing the uh, uh, financial responsibility. We don't want to confuse it now with he does not pray because we could have discussed this earlier. He, he, you've been living with him for a year. So we yes. want to be specific because I want to judge your relationship based on something different than your main focus. Now we focus on that he left the house. He already left the house. When he returns back, we can talk about whether he prays on time or not. You want to resume living with him or not. Okay? But as far as the husband who does not pray, I presented the answer in the very beginning of uh, today's episode. Thank you, Soraya. Uh, Brother Hamdan from United Arab Emirates yesterday asked a very common question. I would like to take a loan from an Islamic bank. Is this permissible? taken a loan from an Islamic bank. Does this mean anything to me? I mean, does it explain the question? It doesn't. Why? Because I don't know whether the bank is Islamic or not. I don't know whether I don't care about the banner. And I believe those who have been following the program for years know. I, I narrated many, many stories. It isn't sufficient to say the Islamic bank of Mars or the moon or whatever. What's necessary is the Islamic transaction. When I take the loan, am I required to pay interest? Am I required upon paying back the loan, whether tomorrow or next year or two years later, am I required to pay a profit, an interest rate? If this is the case, then this is riba. Does it really matter? Even if you have, you sign the contract and you give you the copy of the Quran, because you're not acting upon what the Quran says. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu taqullaha. وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنَ الرِّبَا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ All you who believe, fear Allah. And leave and rob and abandon all the means of riba, business transaction based on interest, if you truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you send me a contract, I read it and I can tell you, yeah, this is an Islamic transaction or a riba based transaction. Okay? That what determines the answer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fathiya from Oman. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Sheikh Khalid Sheikh. Great. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Uh, Sheikh, I just wanted to ask you some questions. Uh, the first one, I have three boys. Uh, the first one is six. The second one is five. And the third is just uh, three. Mm. The first one is, is fasting until four. And then if he sees his younger brother eating, he breaks the fast. Do I have to, I mean, do I have to force him to complete until six o'clock or seven o'clock? You said the first, the first one fast till what time? Until uh, seven, uh, sometimes three, sometimes four. Ah, this is the one who's six years old, right? Yeah, who is six years old. Okay, okay, okay. And the second question is, uh, I just wanted to ask you if a woman dyes her hair in the in in the morning while fasting, is it recommended or not? I mean, putting color in the hair. Putting. She has white hair. <laughs> You're talking about hair dyes, dyeing the hair? Yeah, hair dye, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and the third uh, question is, uh, yesterday I, I dreamt about my grandma, Allah Yerhamha, and uh, she asked me to, to slaughter a goat. And then after uh, telling me that, she kissed my forehead and, and then told me to leave the place. Is it, uh, do, do I have to do that or I can just give sadaqah, that's all? I, I, I still didn't get the dream. You saw your grandma, may Allah mercy her, in a dream. I, I saw my grandma, my mom, and my 
my grandma's sister sitting in a place. Mm. And uh, she she was communicating with me, but I couldn't understand. Just, I just understand one thing, that I have lost I go for her. And then she kissed my forehead four times and then asked me to leave. She asked you to do what? To leave, yeah. I mean, to leave the place where... To leave. Okay. Yeah. So I did that. And the first... For, yeah. And the first question is uh, the cattle star, a sister. Okay. And I... That is the fourth question. Yeah, the, the fourth. Sorry. I told them fourth. If it's okay, fine. If it's not okay... Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to ask you whether you have books. For children, I mean, for the Sira of the Prophet, which is in detail. Can I go to the website and where can I get that? Okay. So for six year olds, who I mean, it's more detailed, more and understanding than Reza. The I mean, it's, it's do you read Arabic? Do you read Arabic? Yes, I read Arabic and I read English. Okay. So you want a book in English or in Arabic? In English for the kids. In so English for the kids. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If it's okay, I mean. Okay, Fatih. Thank you. Oh. You're most welcome. Barakallah fikum. Um, Ramla from United Arab Emirates was very concerned about her husband banning her from wearing niqab. What should I do? And in the time being, just comply with his uh, request. We discussed repeatedly the ruling with regards to wearing niqab or a face veil. The only thing which sounds very strange is that uh, a wife who wants to be modest, who wants to preserve her beauty to be only for her man, and the man challenges that and no, says, no, I want everybody to see your face. Now you're living in a Muslim country. You don't have a problem. You're not afraid that some a crazy maniac is going to pull her niqab off or beat her or assault her. She's not living in France, nor in the States, nor in Holland. She's living in a Muslim country. Even when you go shopping, you see thousands of women who are wearing niqab. So what is the problem then? I highly urge the husband to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, don't you like your wife to imitate Khadija and Aisha and Fatima, the wives and the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Don't you? These are our role models. So please, uh, be helpful and cooperative with your wife, especially she's asking for something that is good. And that is the more right view, covering the face. Especially with women whom Allah blessed with beauty. And especially during the time of fitan and trials. This is Ramadan. Just think about it, that you're going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and uh, you're so lucky that it is your wife who are asking you. Normally we have the other way around. The case is that the, the, the husband wants his wife to be only for him. And she says, no, I cannot tolerate niqab. And now Allah blessed you. The wife is ready and willing to wear niqab. But it's very strange. The husband is the one who wants everybody to see his wife's face. May Allah guide us what's best. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Jabbar from Qatar. Yeah, as-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, I would like to ask a question uh, regarding zakat. Mm. Hello? I'm listening. Yeah, regarding uh, zakat, I have bought land for my children for future use. Mm. So I'm not uh, going to sell them or like that. For, for some time in the future, maybe... I will divide in the children like that. So I need to pay zakat for this every year or no need to pay for it? You already gave me the answer. No, you don't have to pay any zakat on it, okay? The yeah. property which is not for sale, for business, for trade, or tijara, is not zakatable, okay? Okay. But for the like the future use, like for children, if we are buying, we need to pay zakat or no? For what? So far, uh, I have bought land like saving, my money saving in the land. So in the future, maybe I will divide with the children or uh, I will keep for future. It's not now. Yes. So I pay zakat for that? No, no, you don't, you don't owe any zakat on it. The no properties, the houses, uh, whatever you live in, whatever you use for yourself, for your family members, uh, is not zakatable unless if you rent it, then there is a zakat on the rent, on the profit. 
once it reaches the Nisab by itself or in addition to other financial positions. Or if it is used for trade, then this is business. So you pay zakah on the value even if it is not sold out because it is for business or trade. Uh, Muhammad from United Arab Emirates, Assalamu Alaikum. Muhammad, this one call is cut off. Please try again. Okay. What is the best application to be stayed at the time of breaking the fast uh, by Yahya from the KSA? Zahab al Zama, Wabtalat al Uruk, Wathabat al Ajru, inshaAllah. Zahab al Zama. Al Zama is thirst, has been conquered, departed me. <coughs> after eating or drinking. وَابْتَلَّتِ الْعُرُوقِ And the veins are already moist. وَثَبَتَ الْأَجْرُ Excuse me. And the word has been confirmed because one must be certain that when I fulfill the deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to do properly with faith and expecting the word then the word has been confirmed. وَثَبَتَ الْأَجْرُ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills or God's willing. Uh, obviously, you can also make any other dua for yourself or your family members or your beloved ones, those who are alive or those who passed away, because this is the time during which the dua is most likely to be answered. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, لِلصَّائِمِ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ دَعْوَةُ لَا تُرَدْ The fasting person, at the time of breaking his or her fast, they have a dua which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reject. So while some are busy fixing the food and fixing the table, uh, others are sitting and making dua. They can dua for themselves and those who are helping them out. And they can alternate. It's a very, very precious time. The 15, 20 minutes before Maghrib Adhan. You sit and you make dua, face the qibla and make dua. Your dua is most likely to be answered and accepted. Then when you start drinking or eating the dates and breaking your fast, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for providing you with the iftar provision and you say the dua, ذهب الظمأ وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. Do me a favor. From today, every time of breaking your fast, since the dua is most likely to be answered, pray for our brothers and sisters in Somalia. May Allah feed them, may Allah clothe them, may Allah give them safety and security. Pray for our brothers and sisters, Ahl Sunnah, in Syria. They have been ambushed. Uh, Iran and the Shia are supporting the tyrant regime in Syria and killing our Muslim brothers and sisters mercilessly, without having any mercy. But we seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm very, very optimistic. Inshallah, it will be a matter of a few days and Syria will be a free country. And the Syrian people will be free from the Pharaoh and from the tyrants. But we need the power of your dua. Please, every day at the time of breaking your fast, pray for the Muslim Ummah, whether in Libya, in Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, everywhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us peace and tranquility and comfort for our eyes. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad from Nigeria? Abu Bakr from Abu Nigeria. Bakr. Okay. Yeah, Abu Bakr is my name. I got it, Abu Bakr. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Please, uh, I have two questions. One, if, uh, you, uh, if you have a woman and she feels that she wants a divorce because she's not satisfied sexually, is it okay? It depends. It depends. Then, if the man is impotent, if the man is not no, capable... No, 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 the man is not important, but he cannot set, but he cannot satisfy her sexually. Okay. Then uh, another, que uh, uh, yeah, another question. Yeah, another question. Then uh, the, the second question, if, 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 you are, if you combine, if you have a combined uh, animal for three people and they are zakatable, but each one of them is for different different people. Can they remove zakat from it? I guess I didn't understand the question, Abu Bakr. 
No, I mean like you have uh, you have uh, three people have uh, combined animals like cows. They, they are catering for them together, but they, they when you combine them, they are zakatable, but not for individuals. Can you dare remove zakat? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, the zakat is due on every person with regards to zakatul mal on every person's individual posi position. So I do not say you already have the equ what's equivalent to 50 gram of gold and your wife <coughs> or your brother or your sister, not because you're living in the same house, but every person is responsible for his own position. If it reaches an isab, then it is zakatable. It's not to be combined in order to uh, unless if the wealth is for the man, then he gives his son and his daughter just in names in order to divide it so that it will be listed than Isab, that's a different thing. But the zakah is due on a person who has a position that reaches an Isab and it is maintained for one complete lunar year. Salaamu Alaikum. Um Abdullah from Bahrain. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikh. Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I have a question, Sheikh. I was in Mecca, and I just returned. I saw someone's bag being stolen. She had a little baby with her, and uh, she was crying so badly that I couldn't see her. I had some zakat money in my bag. I gave it to her without knowing whether she deserves she is, that it goes to her or not. I want to know if it doesn't go to her, then I'd have to pay that zakat to someone else. What do I do? Please, can you tell me? Okay, before the break, I would like to answer this. When I see beggars in the haram, when I see people who cry and walk between the lines, I, I'm, uh, my money got stolen, somebody stole my purse, whatever, neglect them. Do not pay any attention to them. Focus on your ibadah. Some people take this as a business, and this is their season. I know there are some people who are true in their claims, but... We have to verify that. What happens is, several times we try to verify, like somebody said, I lost everything and I want to go home. Fine, we'll buy your ticket. Or at least your ticket was with which airliner, we can recruit it. But I want money for this, I want money for that, so you find out the person is liar. And when somebody says, all my money got stolen, why would you go to the haram with several thousands? Jenny or pounds or dollars or yens. Why? Why would any person do that? And in the haram, you don't buy food. The food is available there. They provide you with the iftar. They provide you with the, with the suhoor. A lot of uh, uh, generous people. So these claims are false. Especially, you see these faces every day. Those who hang around for some time. So out of pity that you gave her your zakah money. It is accepted, inshallah. And it is valid whether the woman is true in her claim or she's faking it. Because your intention, you thought this person is in need, so you give her the zakah money, your zakah is accepted, and you don't have to repay it. And there is a hadith in this regard, perhaps we can discuss it after the break, so stay tuned. to Ramadan in focus. I'm Yusuf Estes. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim, you can appreciate the subject of Ramadan. As we say in Texas, get the hay down where goats can eat it. You know, totally and completely all mercy. If there is mercy, must be coming from a Rahman. How much? 99 times all of the mercy that's ever been shown in this universe is going to be shown to the believers on that day. And certainly we will need it. Isn't that the truth? Look, this is from the mercy, the Rahmah of Allah. So it's always a responsibility of Muslims to make sure the right message gets out. But it's also our responsibility to listen to those in authority over us. <laughs>
all the prophets are brothers and they uh, represent the same message what was the call of the prophet what was his invitation he was inviting inviting to what so the prophet said oh allah grant your mercy and the one who is tolerant if he you know if he sails on one who is tolerant if he buys and one who is tolerant when he seeks his rights try to discipline them in the best way those daughters will be his shield that means those will be the reason the cause of his protection from hellfire because of what taking care of them what you have in this life no matter what you have is less and it is temporary Wonderful and blessed Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh and welcome back. We already have Sister Anissa from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, my question is uh, me and my husband, we were fast. Okay, and uh, uh, we had uh, uh, intercourse mm. by mistake. Uh, it was like, uh, and we uh, break our fast. So what is the video I wanted to know? You said by mistake. What do you mean by mistake? Yeah, like me and my husband, we had an intercourse and... I wanted to know what I know, I know, now. I know what happened, but you said by mistake, like you didn't Me know. Me and my husband, we were fasting. Okay, I got your question, sister. In Ramadan, no? okay. and it happens two times. Two times in the same day or two days? No, uh, t uh, another day. Oops. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sheikh. You're welcome, sister. Thank you. No. Uh, Brother Abdul Rauf from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Rauf. Wa alaikum assalam, Abdul Rauf. How are you, Doctor? Sir? Good, alhamdulillah. Uh, I just wanted to know the ruling. Uh, for example, I go on my annual vacation, and when I go to my mosque for praying uh, Isha, they always pray 10 to 15 minutes every day, and it's due time. Uh, my question is, is it uh, okay to stay away from such kind of congregational prayers or we can join them and pray again individually at home? Because they're praying always before 15 minutes at uh, due time. They're praying what a few times? I, I don't understand. Isha prayer. Isha prayer. What happens? Yeah. If, for example, Isha prayer is due at 9 p.m. in the evening, they pray at 8.45 p.m. Just like that, because they just say, uh, we have one hour, one hour and a half from the Maghrib, so we can pray from now on. They pray Isha before its due time or later than its due time? No, before its due time. They pray Isha before its due time? Yeah. Interesting. Is there a reason? No, they just don't have any reason. They just have been following this for a long time. And whenever I go and I always argue with them, they say, no, you don't know, we have a lot of problems here. And you are living in Saudi Arabia. No, we just follow the same thing. Uh, one and a half hour from Maghrib is okay, even if it is less than... Uh, this is happening in what country? In Kashmir. In, in Kashmir. In part of Kashmir, yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Abdul Rauf. Uh, of course... A person who prays any prayer a few minutes before its due time, the prayer is invalid. And he has to start takbiratul ihram after entering the time. So those who uh, want to rush, they want to pray taraweeh, and so they make the isha earlier before the adhan time, the isha is invalid. You guys are not traveling, nor are you combining the prayers. So Basically, you prayed a prayer before its due time, the prayer is invalid. That has nothing to do with living in Saudi, or living in Mecca, or living in China. Inna salata kanat ala al kitaban You can neither pray before the, the due time, 
nor are you allowed to postpone the prayer after its fixed time and until the time of the next prayer has entered. Except in the cases of combining the prayer due to traveling. You may combine Dhuhr and Asr with Qasr at the time of either one of them. Or Maghrib and Isha with Qasr and Isha at the time of either one of them. But to pray a prayer before its due time is not accepted and the prayer is invalid. Uh, Brother Abdul Hamid from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Do me a favor, Abdul Hamid. Yes. I can hear myself. I can hear you repeatedly because you have your TV volume on. Mute it. Okay, Sheikh. That question I asked regarding zakat. We are doing business, and we are giving credit to lots of people who pay after 15 days, one month, two months, three months. And some we have lots of bad debts also. How do we do? We have zakat on receivables. Have, we have to pay zakat on receivables. What amount is to be received, or no? And okay. there's one more second question. I travel a lot. I go for ten days, uh, one week abroad. So uh, uh, can I join my prayer there if I'm within the city, or only just on the move I can join my prayer uh, uh, on the move? The two asar and uh, zohar and asar and maghrib isa. Or if, if I stay in a city uh, uh, and I can join the prayer there in my hotel, or no, I have to pray uh, according to the time. Okay. Thank you very much, Sheikh. You're welcome. Sister Hawa from the KSA. Yes. Uh, Hawa. Hawa. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sister. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, Sheikh. I have a nephew, and he lives uh, in, in the state. And he was staying with my sister. He was living with his mother, uh, but there has problem. His mother was so, so they take him and they bring him where they were living. And uh, and he was working. The money he was making before with his mother, she used it whoever they want because he can't tell. The money, if he has a 10 real or 100 real, he doesn't know anything about the money. So my sister, when he was working, they keep his, his money where he was staying, the other money, they put it in his account. They, so the intention that they can let him get married or, or get married. He understands everything, but since he has a little bit slow, he doesn't know. I mean, they didn't, his mother, when he was here, she didn't teach anything that much. And every time she would say, she's, uh, she didn't accept it that he has some problem. Uh, that as a Hawa, child, uh, Hawa, hey. Sister Hawa, what yeah. is the question? The question is, since the, now the money is accumulated, my sister, the money they accumulated. And uh, the mother, is this accountable for that money they have for him? How much is they the amount? How much now, is it? Now they, 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 they had it before 10, uh, 20,000, something like that, but they... Now they send it back home because uh, uh, they give it for expenses now in, in, okay. in Somalia. This money is zakatable. Is zakatable? Yes, whether it is safe for his marriage or future, whether he's sane or insane. No, they, they are responsible. They have the money then. I, I understand. Yeah. The money is his. They put it in an account for him. The money, once it reaches the Nisab, yeah. which is the value of what's worth 595 gram of silver or 85 gram of gold, then the money is zakatable if it stays there for one complete lunar year and it is zakatable every single year it's sitting there. Okay? okay. Thank All you, Hawa. Thank you very much. <coughs> yes, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Muhammad from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Wa alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so just I want to know if I mean. If I miss in the Tarawi, Isha, or in, uh, same time in uh, Fajr prayer, the my Siam and my Siam will be completed or not? Can you tell me this? If you if you do what? If I miss in, if I miss uh, the Fajr prayer or Tarawi, uh. and at the same time if I uh, lost the uh, Fajr prayer. The will uh, complete, uh, my uh, will complete or not? Why would you miss Isha and Fajr? 
because we sometimes maybe I am busy or I am uh, if there is wow. if I am sick if I sick or uh, like this. So if somebody is busy, can simply skip the prayer. Okay, yeah. that's not an excuse. And uh, Allah. Or, so or, uh, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, if or uh, in, if I am in jail for uh, lock up or like this. But if I uh, let me uh, let me uh, answer you, inshallah. I'll answer you, Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, there is no excuse for skipping the prayer whatsoever, except for women during their menses. A person who is asleep, in a coma, or unconscious. But a person who is sane, and awake, whether traveling, or resident, healthy, or sick, poor, or rich, young, or old, disabled, or physically fit, everybody must pray. Everybody must pray on time. This is not a joke. If you miss the prayer, you cannot say that I'm busy. You remind me with this doctor in the States who told me once that he doesn't come because he's busy. His, his clinic is uh, worth a million dollars or so and he doesn't have time. Okay? It's a piece of cake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, can just withdraw his help and support. You make an error and everything is gone. Your license is suspended. And now you have plenty of time. So the man comes to the masjid and Shaykh pray for me. Now he has plenty of time. He doesn't only pray the fard. He prays the fard and the nafl and the tahajjud and not prayer. And he's at the calf all the time. Why? We have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ All our provision comes to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in order to increase our provision and maintain it, we have to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling what He ordered us to do. Do you know that whenever a calamity befalls a servant, it is simply due to a sin that he has committed? And in order to lift it or relieve the person from the calamity, then he must repent from that sin. That if you're talking about, I skip the prayer because I'm busy, that's not valid. That is not valid nor accepted. أول ما يسأل عنه العبد يوم القيامة الصلاة. Guess what? The very first question we will be asked about on the day of judgment isn't what degree did you have? What was the latest or the last degree obtained or the highest? Let's say you have three PhDs. Fine. It doesn't mean anything on the day of judgment. What matters is the very first question is الصلاة. Did you used to pray? قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ When أهل النار will be thrown in fire, أهل الجنة will ask them. And uh, the, the, the gods of fire will ask them, What threw you in fire? قَالُوا مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي السَّقَرِ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ Number one, they said, We use not to pray. We use not to pray. Please, do not jeopardize your safety and ruin your future and endless life in the hereafter by skipping the salah. Fasting without salah means nothing. Fasting without namaz means nothing. We must start praying on time. Everybody who's watching me, if you know somebody who is not praying, tell him that fasting without a prayer means nothing. You got to start praying immediately and pray on time. And it is not much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of mercy reduced the number of prayers after it was 50 prayers a day to 5. And he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi I reduced them down to 5, but the reward still will be for 50. You offer 5 prayers, you get the reward of 50. Uh, Umm Abdullah from Bahrain who gave the zakah to a beggar in, uh, in the haram and so on. Do not worry the least, inshallah, Allah accepted your uh, zakah, or I mean it is valid. You don't have to repay it. The hadith says about a man who donated over three nights. Uh, he wanted to give in a charity for the sake of Allah. So once he gave it to an adulteress, a prostitute, and once he gave it to a rich man, and once he gave it to a thief, and every time in the morning people will talk about this innocent man who gave a charity to an adulteress, or to a rich man, or to a thief. So he said, Alhamdulillah, and I shall make it up tonight. And after the three nights, he saw a dream in which he was told that, أَمَّا صَدَقَتَكَ 
أما صدقتك فقد قبلت With regards to your charity it has been accepted But with regards to the different cases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best Because he has a hikmah Maybe the sadaqah, the charity would help the prostitute to quit And the rich to, re, to, uh, to give, to be tempted to give any charity And the thief to quit Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a turning point. We should not let it go without changing ourselves. We are living in uh, the Arab Spring and in the actual revolution to revolt against our desires, to revolt against our whims and against the shaitan and the temptations. Let's quit our bad habits. Let's reconcile our relations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start praying on time and wallahi you'll enjoy it and you will find all your problems have been solved and you will live in peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace in this life and in the hereafter. Peace be upon you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Keeping my heart, you'll remember